Welcome to Janus International, leading global manufacturer and supplier of turnkey self-storage, commercial and industrial building solutions, including roll-up and swing doors, hallway systems, relocatable storage units, and facility and door automation technologies. The Janus team operates out of several U.S. locations and five locations internationally. Installing and maintaining a roll-up door is an easy process. By following the instructions in this video, as well as the installation guide that came with your door, you will have a low-maintenance, top-of-the-line door installed in no time. In this video, we are installing a Model 2000, but the same procedures should be followed for the installation of any Janus commercial door. We reference the installation instruction throughout the video, so it's important that you refer to this guide often for measurements and material sizes. Also, note that your installation guide outlines procedures for installing an electric operator, which are not shown in this video. You will need the following items to install your commercial door. A screw gun or drill, a hammer, a tape measure, a utility knife, a hex head nut driver or ratchet, a carriage bolt ratchet, a pipe wrench. Throughout the video, you will see warnings, notes, and cautions. Please pay attention to them as they have been included for your safety and the safety of others. Prior to installing a door, you will want to go over some preliminary steps to ensure a smooth installation. First of all, be sure you do not cut the tape and plastic wrap that holds the door curtain in a roll until instructed to do so. First, check the wall opening width and height and verify these measurements against the size of the door to be installed. Verify that your jams are flush and plumb. Make sure that there is adequate side clearance at jams and clearance above and at sides of header. Next, check vertical and horizontal headroom requirements for your particular door model. These requirements can be found in the installation instructions that came with your door, or they are also available at www.janusintl.com. Verify that the guide mounting surface on the jam is flush, and make sure that all parts required for installation are with the door. Next, we turn to our mounting plates. If door will install to steel jams, mounting plates for the door brackets are required and may be welded or bolted to the jams. The top of the mounting plate should be located 10 inches above the top of opening and be level with each other. Be sure to mark the location. The side of the mounting plate should be even with the edge of the opening. Bend the top of the guide bell mouth before installing brackets as shown. Attach door brackets to guides, locating top surface of bracket two inches below top of guide. Use two each carriage bolts, hex nuts, and flat washers per bracket for tensioner end and the non-tensioner, or drive end for push-up operation. Refer to page 3 in your installation guide to review the exact size requirements for all bolts, nuts, screws, and washers. For the reduced hand chain drive end, install drive bracket with two each carriage bolts, hex nuts, and flat washers. Insert one each 1 and a quarter inch OD by 3 quarter inch long space two between guide and bracket at each bolt location. Again, measure to ensure that your brackets are 2 inches below the top of guide. Attach brackets and guides to jams using fasteners, shown in Table 1 on page 3 of your installation instructions. The guide should be mounted, centered above the opening, and space curtain width plus 1 inch apart, measured from back of guide to back of guide. Both guides must be plumb. Once both guides have been correctly positioned, attach them to the jams using the appropriate fastener at each hole location. Tighten bracket to guide fasteners and install three bracket to jam attachment fasteners for each bracket. Now bring the curtain over to the working area. For the larger door sizes like this one, we recommend that two people carry the door in and lay it into position. Check to see that the floor is level and clean. This provides a neat working area and prevents damage to the curtain. Be sure to use proper lifting equipment and correct lifting procedures to avoid damage or injury. Next, using the tensioner assembly spring roll pin located in the knurled wheel, rotate upward in the direction that clears the axle. Slide tensioner assembly over axle with arrow pointing toward the wall. Release pin. For the reduced chain drive end, fasten 63 tooth cast ring gear to drum using 3 each 3 8 16 by 1 and half inch hex bolts and 3 8 inch lock washers. Next, you'll want to install 2 each 3 8 16 by 1 inch screws in the threaded holes in the cast axle support bracket. These will be tightened against the axle later. Slide cast axle support bracket over the axle. If installing a push-up or electric operation, use the stamped axle support bracket on the drive end with arrow pointing toward the wall. For the electric drive end, attach the stamped axle support to the door bracket using two each hex bolts, lock washers, and flat washers. In preparing to lift the door assembly, remove the green foam on the ends, but leave the other materials intact. This helps for easy centering of the door curtain 
To lift the door assembly, you'll want to orient the door with the bottom bar located at a 12 o'clock position. Lift the door assembly using a forklift that has padded forks in order to prevent damage to curtain. Position the door brackets with tensioner and axle support resting safely on top of the bracket flange. Door should be positioned as close as possible to the header and still be able to rotate and clear the bottom bar. Each end of the door should be equal distance from the header and the curtain must be centered in the opening. For the reduced hand drive end, attach the cast axle support bracket to the door bracket using one hex bolt, one lock washer, and one flat washer. Chain hoist can be universal, meaning it can go on either side of the door. The spur gear on the hoist will engage with the external teeth of the cast ring gear on the end of the drum. Connect the cast axle support bracket to the side of the chain hoist using a hex bolt and lock washer. Feed the hand chain over chain pocket wheel and through the hoist. Connect ends of hand chain, being careful not to twist the chain. The hand chain may be lengthened or shortened as necessary. Install the hand chain keeper on the wall or jam. For the tensioner end, attach the tensioner assembly to the door bracket using two each grade 5 hex bolts, lock washers and flat washers. Again, refer to page 5 of your installation guide for exact material sizes. Now it's time to set the initial spring tension. Rotate the door one and a half revolutions in the direction that would send the bottom of bar down through the guides. While firmly holding the door at the bottom bar, cut the tape and plastic wrap that holds the door in a coil. Direct the bottom bar down into the guides, stopping just past the headstop area. To install the headstops, slide the headstop from the outside of each guide. Secure each headstop to guide with a 3 8 inch hex bolt and a 3 8 inch lock washer. Transfer the carriage bolts and serrated flange hex nuts that were removed from both ends of the bottom bar to the two holes at the center of the bottom bar and angle. For push-up operation only, install rope in one of the holes at the center of the leg of the bottom bar angle. Lower the bottom bar and install the slide lock and step plate using two each hex bolts, hex nuts, flat washers, and nylon insert hex nuts. Please refer to page 6 of your installation guide for material sizes. Do this at both ends of the bottom bar. Test slide lock to be sure it opens and closes properly. To check the operation of the door, lower and raise the door a couple of times to test operation and balance. If the door is easy to close but hard to open, increase spring initial tension. If the door is easy to open but hard to close, decrease spring initial tension. To adjust your spring tension, loosen all set screws in the tensioner and axle support at both ends of the door. At the tensioner end, place a pipe wrench around the end of the axle so that pulling down on the handle will rotate the axle to increase spring tension. To decrease spring tension, momentarily pull down on the pipe wrench and then lift the spring roll pin on the tensioner's knurled wheel. Gently let up on the pipe wrench, allowing the axle to rotate to reduce the tension. While holding the new tension, release the tensioner spring roll pin. The tensioner will now grip the axle and hold the new tension setting. To increase spring tension, pull down on the pipe wrench. The tensioner will automatically grip the axle and hold the new tension setting. Make sure all brackets are square with the door before tightening set screws. Finally, tighten all headset screws in the tensioner and axle support at both ends of the door. Remove the pipe wrench and again test the operation of your door. If tension is still off, repeat the previous steps until the door easily opens and closes. Use the installed chain keeper to lock door in position. You have now successfully completed a quality installation of a Janus commercial roll-up door. By following these steps properly, you will have the best operating door in the industry. Should you encounter any problems or have questions, feel free to contact a representative at Janus International at 770-562-2850. These instructions and other useful information can be found on our website at JanusINTL.com. Thank you for selecting Janus International as your door provider.